I hope this finds you doing well. I know this is a difficult time for many people and things all around seem a little more distressing than normal. Most good things in society take dedicated, persistent, and long-term hard work. I hope we're equal to the task of making our society more fair regardless of what you look like. As I am not an eloquent speaker, I'll leave it at that. What I hope to do is to show you a few interesting pen-related things to give you some space to relax because that's what my fountain pens do for me. First, I'd like to thank all the people that went to the Applebum channel to watch my top three pen video. I read every comment and really appreciated them. Thank you. Here in Tokyo, we've been off of our state of emergency for about two weeks. The state of emergency wasn't a true lockdown as it was not enforceable by law. But it and perhaps other factors may have done the trick as it looks like we have some pretty low numbers. As of today, Tokyo has had 307 deaths and all of Japan has had 903. So I decided I would venture out and check out some pen stuff. Kakimori, a stationery store here in Tokyo, decided to let people come in in one hour time blocks with only four people. You had to make an appointment online and it was for one hour. A few of my pen friends decided to go, but I was too slow in that time slot filled up. So I went earlier in the week and it was basically me and another customer and three staff members. It was pretty interesting. So the rules were you had to make an appointment, only four customers were allowed in the store, you had to wear a mask, and you had to use hand sanitizer and not have a temperature. Kakimori has this beautiful kind of minimalist storefront that's located in Kuramae, which is just south of Asakusa. Interestingly, just right across the street is this two-story building that looks like it's made out of shipping containers. You see this a lot in Japan, kind of interesting architecture. Here's their stylistic sign that says Kakimori. And then the sign that explains that you need to wear a mask, use hand sanitizer, practice social distancing, and not have a temperature. When you walk in, they ask you to use the hand sanitizer and ask you your name and your appointment time. Kakimori is typically pretty busy and crowded, and it was really nice to be able to walk around the store without really having to worry about running into people. Here you can see the staff in the middle of the store next to their notebook binding machines. Near the entrance is this interesting map with all the local area shops and then some shopping baskets and shopping trays. The map's pretty cool and is made out of some sort of really interesting paper. It felt like wax paper. They had this wall of fountain pens and all of them had their price and name listed and you could just try them out. Right underneath the fountain pens were these different pads of different kinds of paper. So not only could you try out the fountain pens, you could try them out on different kinds of paper. And something every fountain pen user would appreciate, there was a sign explaining that some pens needed to be uncapped by unscrewing it and some you could just pop off. Then they had their wall of Kakimori inks. It was nice because for each color they had drawn a picture, had an ink swab and some ink lines and several different kinds of pens to check out that ink, both a roller ball and fountain pen. Kakimori inks are all pigment based inks. They used to be made by Diamine, but they had some supply chain problems before. So now they're made by a Japanese paint company. 
though they are pigment inks, they are still pretty wet and don't seem to dry out as much as other pigment inks. I'll eventually do a review on this line of inks. Next to the inks were these roller balls that you could buy, both 0.5 and 0.7, that were made specifically to fill with their inks. The roller balls were like a full-up fountain pen. It include instructions in both Japanese and English. It's a snap cap, complete with an inner liner, though they do recommend that you use the pen every day. It has a full-up converter, and you basically dip the converter into the ink to fill it up, not the tip. When your bottle of ink runs low, they supply you with this pipette to be able to put ink into that little cup and then fill your converter from the cup. They also have a wall of like ballpoint pens and markers and erasers and paper clips and other types of office supplies. This is their paper sampling table. There's little squares of all kinds of paper and different kinds of writing instruments to check them out with. They're pencils, mechanical pencils, fountain pens, markers, and ballpoint pens. This table includes fool's cap, comic paper, bank paper, craft paper, and watercolor paper. And this is what they're most famous for, the make your own notebook. There are instructions in English and you pick up a tray so that you can assemble all the pieces of your notebook. First, you select the covers for your notebook. They have 60 different types of covers and they're changed out on a regular basis. I'm choosing this kind of blue watercolor cover. Then you choose your paper. They have 30 varieties of paper and in your notebook, you can either use one pack up to four packs of paper. And then you select your hardware for your notebook. You can select other things like folders, envelopes, and dividers. And then you take your tray over to the counter and they make your notebook for you. This is my notebook. I decided to have a plain backing and then I also chose a dark binding and not to have it all the way down, but just on the ends. They even check with me on which way I wanted to have the design oriented. I chose the lighter part for the top. I chose a dark navy for my elastic band, a kind of taupe calendar for my first page, and then the rest of it was Tomoa River grid paper. This whole setup was about $20, and you could get a notebook from somewhere around about $12 to about $30, depending on what you put in it. I think it was well worth it because it was a really fun experience. Kakimori has a separate store a couple blocks away called the Ink Stand, where you can go and make customized ink. It's still closed and they hope to maybe open it in about a month. But just around the block is the Dandelion Chocolate Factory. It's only open for takeout. I stopped in for an iced coffee. Since I'm doing this no sugar thing for right now, I didn't get any chocolate, but I looked really hard at it. I drank my coffee across the street in a small park. In Japan, there's not a lot of public garbage cans, so it's very common to consume your food near where you bought it and then return back to throw your trash away. The bathroom in this park had these really cool plants growing out of the roof. After Kakimori, on the way home, I stopped off at Okamotoya Stationery Store. Though they didn't have an appointment system, they still required you to wear a mask and use their hand sanitizer. Okamotoya has renovated and they put their high-end stationery, their fountain pens, and inks on the bottom floor. This renovation decluttered the bottom floor and turned it into a kind of Japanese theme. For most of the time that I was there, I was the only customer. They have a varied selection 
of notebooks and fountain pens and other stationary products and a nice selection of ink that you can find in many Japanese stationery stores. But the real star is this ink testing area. Here you can test out all their different brands of ink and their huge selection of Tono and Limbs ink. The table has the Ido Shizuku tester pens, a couple of fountain pens, some glasses of water, and a glass pen. And next to their tester pad is a big bottle of hand sanitizer that they'd like for you to use. And here's the bottles and bottles of Tono and Limbs ink, Tassia, and some Kyono Oto inks also. The day that I was there was the 108th anniversary for the store. Here's a picture in 1957 of their storefront. Up on their second floor, it's just an assortment of office supplies, notebooks, and some washi tape. I did pick up something called the Ink Book, which holds 12 Tamiya sample bottles. Before I go on, I need to explain what Inkunuma is. It literally means ink swamp, but that doesn't really convey the real nuttiness of Inkunuma. Maybe a better word would be like ink fever. But there's a group of people, typically young ladies, that collect all kinds of ink. The rarer and more unique, the better. Tokyo has had a couple of very large ink shows and I'll link them up on my end card at the end of the video. But these ink shows are typically swamped with young ladies. And the joy of this collecting is swatching these inks and testing them out. And you don't do that with a fountain pen. When I told the sales lady at Okamotaya that I didn't own a glass pen, she was shocked. I told her I only used fountain pens. I'm pretty sure she doubted I was female. So yeah, here's my female card. The Japanese have taken glass pens to a higher level. Different artists' glass pens either write smoother or thinner or thicker, or the nib itself makes a different sound. And that's a mineral at the end of the pen. It's an opal. The sales lady kept asking me, using a fountain pen, how, how do you change inks? It's so difficult to clean out. How do you test your inks? So I guess I've joined the Ink Gunuma crowd. And I know all my friends in Japan are all laughing their heads off. So I'll see you again next week, hopefully if I haven't drowned in this ink swamp.